Good evening. Welcome to Webster University and this joyous occasion, our annual December toast to graduates. I am Tao Dang Williams, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, and I will emcee our program tonight. Please join me in expressing appreciation for our talented jazz trio musicians who set the evening's tone with their beautiful music. Senior tenor saxophonist Jared Allen, Andrew Baker on the guitar, and Blake Mickens on the bass. <laughs> To get our program started, please join me in welcoming Dr. Beth Strobel, Chancellor of Webster University. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Webster University. We are so grateful that you have joined us this evening to celebrate an annual event now, December Toast. And it is a December toast, of course, because what we're going to do tonight is to toast our graduates. I'm honored to acknowledge all who have completed a degree or a certificate for your steadfast commitment and your determination to reach a worthy goal. That has led you, graduates, to earn a seat at tonight's toast and for us to honor you. While courses of study and career paths and future ambitions vary greatly across each one of you, you do share a common desire to use your individual passions and your talents to improve your life and the lives of others, to pursue individual excellence, and to aspire to make a true impact on the world. Well, graduates, as we celebrate your accomplishments tonight, I'm going to encourage you to take a moment to reflect on those who have shared this journey with you. The individuals who remained as committed and steadfast to your academic success as you have been, many of whom are seated with you or among you tonight, and whether that was a family member, a friend, a professor, an advisor, whether that individual is someone with you tonight or someone who could not join us in person, I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that each one of us who accomplishes a goal does that with the support of family and friends, professors, advisors, and a whole family of people that makes a Webster degree possible. And so friends and family who are joining us tonight, your graduate has identified you as someone with whom they want to share this momentous journey. Your continuous support has been pivotal in their journey and the successful outcome. The encouragement you provided them is a gift beyond measure. And so from all of us at Webster, we want to ask friends and family members, professors, advisors, anyone who's here to support a graduate, Will you please stand and we want to give you a round of applause. That was wonderful, thank you. <laughs> so I want to call out specifically the Webster faculty and staff. And I thank them for their unwavering support for each one of our students. Our university is so fortunate to have such talented and professional staff and faculty members. The support that you give in these students' journey strengthens our entire community. And so if you are a faculty member or a staff member, I would say a dean or otherwise at Webster, will you please stand up because we want to call you out particularly and thank you. Well, Webster University class of 2022 graduates, 
We have been honored to be a part of your academic journey. And we radiate with pride at this point of transition for you, as you transition from student to graduate and alum. I want all the graduates who are with us tonight to now stand so that we can applaud you. We are so happy for you, and I am glad that you're happy for yourself. It's a wonderful moment. Well, this evening, you're going to hear from university leadership, as well as our keynote speaker, Amy Shaw, who's the president and CEO of 9PBS and truly a trusted and valued partner. You're going to hear from Daniel Lasella, president of the Webster University Alumni Board of Directors, who will welcome you as the newest members of the Alumni Association. And at this time, please turn your attention to the screen to see a special video message from Webster University's president and my partner in leadership, Dr. Julian Schuster. Webster University graduates, December 16, 2022 marks a significant milestone for each of you. Today is a day in which you are reflecting on your individual journey, the challenges, opportunities, and experiences that led you to be seated here this evening. We can all agree that the last few years have been extremely unique as we have navigated through redefining how we interact, teach, and learn as peers, as students, and as educators. The ability to adapt and evolve has been critical to ensure your success. As we reflect on previous two and a half years, I am humbled by the challenges we have all faced, and I am extremely proud of the growth that we have individually and collectively manifested. While each person's experience was unique, we shared a common connection and desire to continue pursuing our goals and fulfilling our purpose. As a university, Webster continues to look at ways to innovate, deepen our global footprint, and fulfill our commitment to creating the global leaders of tomorrow. We hope that your experience at Webster has equipped you with the tools and resources to achieve your most ambitious goals. As you embark on the next chapter of life, I wish you success and fulfillment both personally and professionally. I hope you are as proud of your accomplishments as we are of you. We are honored to have you join our network of alumni and look forward to watching you achieve your most desired goals and dreams. May you cherish the memories and relationships from your time at Webster for years to come. And finally, may Webster University always have a special place in your heart. You will forever be part of ours. Congratulations. Good evening, graduates and guests. My name is Eric Rothenbuehler. I'm the Dean of the School of Communications. It's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Amy Shaw, President and CEO of 9PBS. Uh, also a very good friend of Webster University, good friend of the School of Communications, and a friend of mine. So Ms. Shaw, my friend Amy, is a recognized national leader and innovator in community engagement and public media. Uh, she's a career long, that's a career long pursuit which has led her to become the first woman to lead 9PBS in its 67 year 
history. She leads a talented team in groundbreaking work that leverages on-air, online, and community engagement activities for measurable impact around important and complex issues in the St. Louis region, with a special focus, I would say, on youth and education. In 2021, Ms. Shaw was named by the St. Louis Business Journal as one of the 25 most influential business women in the St. Louis region. She was inducted into the St. Louis Media Hall of Fame in 2022. She serves on the National Board of PBS, on the Grand Center Board, and is chair of the Focus St. Louis Board, among other engagements. Amy is one of the first people I met in St. Louis even before I moved here and was one of the first people I asked to join the School of Communications Advisory Board. She very quickly took the role of chair of the board and served in that capacity for seven years. With Amy's leadership, 9PBS has been a key partner with our internship program in the School of Communications. We've had many students that have benefited from that practical work experience and the special opportunity to work in a well-run, mission-focused, community-engaged, nonprofit communication organization. For some of them, it was career-changing, and we're proud of how many alumni we have working at 9PBS today. And for many others, we're equally proud who benefited from that experience and moved on to work in other organizations. Guests and graduates, please welcome a good friend and an important community leader, Amy Shaw. Okay, take a deep breath, because you're, this is a big one, right? Okay, so I was thinking about what kind of book would I want when I graduated from college? And this is what I wish someone had told me. So this, these are my stories. They may not be exactly aligned with your stories, but I hope that you'll uh, think about your journey forward and about who you want to be as you leave Webster. Okay, so I don't have a title for this book that I'm gonna give you. I'll let you self-title it. You can figure it out. But chapter one goes a little bit like this, and this is gonna sound a little silly because I think you know something about this chapter. Uh, chapter one, things will not go as expected or as planned, and it will be fine. It will be okay. Has it been okay? Are you making it? So I, I graduated in, from college in a very different time. Um, I can't imagine being a student in the last couple of years. I think um, it maybe has given you an opportunity to learn a few things about yourself. Um, but I think in all of our lives, things just don't go as planned. And I'm a kind of a planner, and I really like to know what's happening. And um, anything over the last couple of years, you know, plans just out the window. So let me tell you a little bit about my story, because in 2019, um, my world was thrown for a loop when the CEO of 9PBS, some of you know us as Channel 9, and that's okay. We're good with that, too. Um, when the CEO of Channel 9 died in his sleep very unexpectedly. So in a heartbeat, that same day, I was named the interim president and CEO, which was not part of the plan. Um, I was the number two person in the organization, and which is a very different role. And... Over that nine month period that I was the interim CEO, you know, it was really bumpy. I was grieving, I was leading a team of people who were really thrown for a loop. Uh, metaphorically speaking, there were a lot of planes in the air that we had to land. It was just a very, very bumpy time. And I was in a very public job interview. Um, the board, which rightfully so, decided to do uh, a job, a, a national search for my position. And I'm glad that they did that. It was a very validating experience. But it is really hard to be public and to be doing that job and vying for the job at the same time. It, was, it really tested my mettle. And a week before I was officially named, you know how the story ends, I, I am the CEO. So I was officially named the CEO, which was great. Um, but a week before I was named the CEO, I was traveling on business and I tripped and I landed something like this and broke my shoulder in eight giant places, um, which was not part of the plan. Um, it was mortifying for all kinds of, like any time you fall in front of a lot of people, it's mortifying. So um, 
A week later, I'm named the CEO. I was in a tremendous amount of pain. I couldn't drive. I couldn't function. I was just really, it was a mess. And it was not the way things were supposed to go. This was supposed to be the joy and excitement, and this was supposed to be the moment. And then three weeks later, we're in a pandemic. Um, so that was also not part of the plan. And so, listen, we made it. We did extraordinary things, our team. And, and I think on some level, it made me as a better professional to be in that vulnerable position and to have really um, all those expectations blown out of the water. So it's what you do with it when those plans don't go exactly. You, you kind of know this. All right, chapter two. Uh, swim your swim. Now, I'm a swimmer. I'm a lap swimmer. So if you're a runner, run your run. If you're a walker, walk your walk. You get, you get the analogy here. So um, 2021, I get back in the pool, and I'm a very competitive person. And I've never swam competitively, but I get back in the pool. And one, I'm positive that my arm is going to be kind of like a Barbie arm and just break off and float away. Um, it does not. It works um, after hundreds of hours of physical therapy. And so I start swimming, and I realize um, I've gained weight. I'm older. Um, I'm slow. And my competitive side has me really thinking as I'm swimming, like, oh, the person next to me is swimming much faster. My form is bad. You know, like I'm all the things that we tell ourselves. So. Um, my competitive nature actually almost prevented me from staying in the pool, which is really beneficial mentally and physically. So I finally just said to myself, okay, listen, this is ridiculous. Swim your swim. And I've used that metaphor for a lot of things. There's always going to be people who are richer, prettier, smarter, healthy, whatever it is, fill in the blank. You just got to do you. You do you, and it's going to be great. And that has really sustained me on days when I'm the fastest person in the pool and on days when I'm the slowest person on the pool, in the pool. Um, you bring what you bring, a coach told me recently. And sometimes what you bring is exactly what's needed to a situation. Uh, chapter three, know what you value. Um, and this is, this is really something that has only dawned on me more recently where I really understand what my core values are, which is sort of surprising. I'll be honest, I'm 55 years old, much closer to 56. And so I should kind of know this already, and it surprised me that I didn't. But professionally, I've worked for a lot of people who were very strong, and so I always aligned with what was important to them in my work. So understanding your personal values, especially in a professional context, I think is critical because it also helps you understand when you should stay somewhere or when it's time to maybe find something else. So would you like to know my three values? OK, joy. I take great joy in the work I do, in the people I work with, when people are doing great work, when we're doing great work. Joy. I do not enjoy a slog. I do not enjoy um, complaining about it. And that made, I really realized finally that, you know, when I'm with people who aren't joyful about their work, it's really tough. The second one is simplicity. We've all worked for people who like complexity. I used to say um, that we were flames to the moth of complexity. We just love to be really complex. And there are times where things are really complex and we need to simplify them. And there are times where things are simple and we need to keep them really simple. Um, so knowing how to simplify things, which is why I think in bullets at the same time. And finally, community, which is really well aligned with the work that I do. Um, but I think knowing what you stand for and what you value is really important because it helps you do that work. All right, chapter four. This one's really important. Ask for what you want. This is also really great relationship advice. Uh, my husband would tell you this. So. I've wasted so much time not being clear about what I really want or being uncomfortable about asking for what I wanted because I was afraid maybe it was too much or um, maybe over the line. And, and so I think it wastes time. It causes problems for you. It causes problems for other people. It just wastes a lot of time and energy. Just be straight and clear and to the point. And you're not always going to get what you ask for, but I know when someone on my team is asking for something like a raise, we might not be able to do it, but at least I know how they're thinking about things and I know how they're assessing their value, and it's a really important thing. So I think we would just all save a lot of time if we just asked for what we wanted. Um, I think it's also especially important for those of you who are or are going to be in positions of leadership or authority um, it's really important to make sure that you know what people on your team want 
and also that your team know what you want because they waste a lot of time and energy trying to figure that out that could be better served or better used for better purposes. Now, you have to consider this. Um, do not ask for things that are incredibly selfish and don't ask for things that sort of torture people for sport. Um, we all know people who are kind of in that place. Um, it's just best to ask people for what you want because it just sort of clears the air and gets things moving faster. Chapter five, take up space in the room. Um, this is something especially for you younger folks. Um, I think sometimes we come into the room and we think like, God, they're so smart and all these people know things and they know more than me. And you're there for a reason. I wanna know what you have to say. I wanna hear what you have to say. You probably bring something based on your real life experience that might be so different and might be the solution to a problem, to my problem. That's a really important thing just to know, that's part of knowing your value, but it's also this important thing of really knowing that you're part of the team and that you don't need to hang back. Um, it's, it's really, really important. So that's the end of the book, but I do have um, three other footnotes that are very practical that I'd like to instill upon you. Um, the first one is write thank you notes. Um, the dying art of actually a, a paper thing with a stamp on it. It is such a simple gesture that has outsized impact and will make an impression on people. It is the simplest thing you can do. I, I spend a lot of time writing thank you notes to donors, to people who've done nice things. It also, re it puts you in a place of gratitude to realize all the people that are in your corner and doing things for you and your work. This one, and this is probably more for the ladies in the room, wear comfortable shoes. Um, I don't know what your feet look like today, but many, many times in my life, I've had to run to things because something went wrong. If you've ever worked in a media organization, things go wrong all the time. And the quicker you can get to things and the more you can do, the better. Also, um, many miserable professional situations have been made better by wearing comfortable shoes because our days are very, very long. So this is my practical guidance to you. And finally, this one comes from my late mother. Um, and this I found, have found valuable in all things in life. You have to buy it when you see it. So she was a shopper, right? So sometimes things will be there, sometimes they won't. You gotta make that decision. But I think it's a larger analogy for our lives. Opportunities won't always be there, so you can't take too long to make a decision. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and know that it's the right thing, but you have to buy it when you see it because sometimes those opportunities aren't gonna come back around again, um, and so wasting that time. But again, it does really work for shopping as well in this season of, of consumption. Um, I'm really proud to be a part of this tonight, and I'm honored to be here. I'm so um, grateful for all of you, and I'm so proud and, and happy for all of you on your journeys. I hope that you stay in St. Louis. I hope that you make St. Louis an amazing place. Um, we are an amazing place, and it takes all of us because there's no savior coming for us. It's all of you who have these great skills and talents and lens on the world that you've just recently acquired this new degree. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy, for those inspiring words. And could we please have one more round of applause for Amy? I'm Nancy Hellrud, I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs. My remarks are gonna be very brief and just cover two things. The first thing is I wanna add my congratulations to the graduating students here. We're so proud of your accomplishments in reaching this milestone and we look forward to seeing and hearing about what you do next. Or to use uh, Amy's words, we look forward to hearing what your next chapters are um, and celebrating those as well. Second, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the academic leadership of the schools and colleges from which you've earned your degrees. I have not read their remarks yet, saving it for tonight, um, but I feel certain that the theme of celebrating your accomplishments will continue. Uh, we will all be at the reception afterwards, so be sure to find your 
deans or your chairs or your academic leaderships as well as the faculty and staff from the schools and colleges that you've graduated from uh, so that you can connect uh, in person. So first we will hear from Michael, Mike Holsizer, who's Dean of the College of Science and Health. Second will be Danielle Danny McCartney, Interim Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Third, Eric Rothenbuehler, just Eric, Eric Rothenbuehler, Dean of the School of Communications. Stephanie Mafood, Interim Dean of the School of Education. Paul Steger, Dean of the Leisure Dean, College of Fine Arts. Eric Reine, Chair of the Department of Management in the George Herbert Walker School of Business and Technology. We'll start with Mike Holsizer, Dean of the College of Science and Health. Hello, everyone. As you just heard, I'm uh, Dr. Mike Holsizer. I'm the uh, Dean for the College of Science and Health, and I'd like to welcome you, of course, to the December toast. On behalf of all the faculty, staff, and students in the College of Science and Health, I want to congratulate each and every one of you on your degree programs. You are the first graduates of the new College of Science and Health. We created this college to better prepare students like yourselves in, in uh, areas such as um, biology, chemistry, exercise science, uh, nursing, nurse anesthesia, human services, professional counseling, and psychology. Do we have any graduates of, out there of these areas? All right. Now we have accomplished faculty in all these areas as well, uh, active scholars, devoted educators, uh, hands-on uh, faculty. Um, our college itself is also working with a, an advisory board that has industry leaders, making sure that we have a curriculum that's cutting edge and really meets societal needs. Uh, you've received, as you know, a top-notch education here at Webster University. Consequently, go forward with the confidence that you have the tools to be successful in the next stage of your life. You have a bedrock of skills that you've learned uh, to move out into the workforce. We consistently hear back from our graduates that they are more than prepared to be successful after graduation. We also get employers who are actively seeking out our graduates. You are ready for the next step in your career. You should be proud of your accomplishments. There have likely been times where you felt unsure that you could make it to the end. However, you persevered and overcame the obstacles that lay in front of you. The determination, resilience, and grit that you showed will will very much will help you out with future endeavors. When the times get tough, remember everything you overcame to get to this point. You can do it. Of course, there's more to life than work. Regardless of your degree program, each of you is taught the importance of empathy, kindness, and respect. Consider spending some time helping others. Get involved in area youth programs. Help out those less fortunate. Volunteer at not-for-profit organizations. Make a difference in someone's life. To quote Muhammad Ali, service to others is the rent that you pay for your room here on earth. Consider the many ways you can pay your rent. You may find that's the part of your life that you may, you may get the most satisfaction from going forward. So I speak for all faculty, staff, and students in the College of Science and Health when I say congratulations on your success. You will be forever part of the Webster University family. Do not hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Stop by from time to time and let us know how you're doing. Uh, our door is always open. We want to hear about all your many successes going forward. Congratulations. Hello, good evening. I'm Danny McCartney, the Interim Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And on behalf of the faculty and staff of the Humanities and Social Sciences, congratulations, graduates. We're so glad that you're here. As my colleagues in anthropology would point out, we don't have very many rituals in our culture to mark major milestones, major life events. So I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you're here to celebrate this major achievement, this really auspicious achievement in your life. Especially considering the many late nights I'm sure you've spent trying to cram all the information in your head that your professors have provided to you. And no matter what your degree is, no matter what program you're graduating in, you haven't just learned content during your time with us. You've learned skills that will benefit you for the rest of your life. You may have hated your group work assignments, but they taught you how to work with people who are different from you. No matter where you go from here, you will always be working with people who have differing viewpoints and you've had an experience that can help you with that. Writing all those research papers certainly left you with some sleepless nights. 
but you learned how to identify a question or a problem. You learned how to conduct research to find an answer to that question and to communicate your findings in a well-written paper. Hopefully, that experience also taught you that just because you know you can write a paper the night before it's due, you know what a terrible idea that is. So moving forward, you know to plan ahead when you have a big project. Through your classroom discussions and your presentations, you've also learned how to disseminate information or to make an argument via the spoken word, even if your audience disagrees with you. Remember that as you engage with the diverse, contradictory, and controversial ideas that fill our public discourse today. All of your coursework and classroom experiences were designed to fulfill Webster's mission to transform you for individual excellence in global citizenship. But what does that mean, to be an individually excellent global citizen? Well, for those of you graduating from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, it means you join the ranks of people with the skills and knowledge to create a better world by addressing the social, cultural, political, and environmental problems that we, saw, we face today. People such as Martin Luther King Jr., a sociology major, uh, Kurt Vonnegut, an anthropologist, George Soros and Woody Allen, both philosophy majors, Madeleine Albright, a political science major, Conan O'Brien, a history major, Clarence Thomas and Emma Watson, both English majors. These are only some of the many notable people who have taken the content and skills they learned in the humanities and social sciences to influence our, our world. So like those who came before me, I also look forward to learning how you take the skills and content you've learned to make the world a better place. So congratulations, graduates. New graduates of the School of Communications, friends and family, I offer a toast to your courage, your resilience, and your accomplishments. We're proud of you. We know you're going to make the world a better place. So this is a toast. It's not a speech. I want you to imagine me with a glass of champagne in my hand. And since I have a glass of champagne in my hand, imagine me smiling and laughing, you thinking my jokes are funny. And this is a good time. We're here to celebrate. So think back two, four, five years ago, where you were before you began your studies, who you were, what you knew, and what you didn't know. Think about how much you've learned, how much you've grown, and what you're ready to do now. Take pride in yourself and be confident in your future. You are communicators, and the world needs you now more than ever. When so much separates and holds us apart, Politics, war, pandemics, nationality, geography, economics, cultural differences, differences of experience by race, class, gender, and sexuality. The world needs communicators to reconnect us, to help us understand each other, to promote empathy, to tell our stories, to express our points of view, and to help us laugh together. We need understanding and good humor. So go out there and practice with confidence and with ethics. Always strive to do what is right. Never say or do anything you wouldn't be proud to see on the internet in the morning, because you will. Seek the truth rather than power. Serve people rather than wealth. Make a positive difference everywhere you go. So be well, do good, prosper, and come back and visit us once in a while. Don't forget about us because we're proud of you. Congratulations again to all of the graduates of the School of Communications. The world's a great, big, beautiful place. It's full of things we haven't seen yet and things we haven't learned yet. So go out there. It's your adventure. Go get it. Good evening and congratulations. My name is Stephanie Mahfoud and I'm the Interim Dean of the School of Education. Do you realize that we have about a million ways to tell people to go? Think about it. When we send people on a journey, either physically or metaphorically, 
We have lots of ways to articulate our well wishes. We wish people bon voyage or safe travels, Godspeed. We tell people to go in peace, go with God, take care, take it easy. My most esteemed colleague who hails from Jamaica admonishes us all to walk good. And if we're really feeling poetic, we may evoke parts of the Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you and may the wind always be at your back. All these sentiments obviously are imparting well wishes for safe journey and ease in travels. These sentiments also imply that journeying is not always safe or easy, hence the need for direct and specific well wishes. We all probably experienced physical hardships during our journey, but living in this continued COVID times, the journey that has weighed most heavily on all of us is, for several years is a psychic one. Spiritual and psychological hardships that come with perpetual lockdowns, uncertainty about the future, life plans that are interrupted, and even the loss of loved ones. These struggles make you question where you are in the journey and even what the journey is for. And yet, all of you are sitting here now at the successful end of your Webster journey, but really only stepping into the next bend in the road. So as we are here in this lovely gathering that is artfully and symbolically telling you to go, here are my wishes for your journey ahead. May you always have the footprints of good people who have walked ahead of you as footholds as you walk behind them. May you have trusted companions who walk beside you. When you find yourself feeling alone on the road or you feel like you've lost the road altogether, may you always remember who you are and what centers you so that you can build solid footprints for those who walk behind you. And I have to say a special thank you and wish for the helpers who are graduating in the School of Education, that's the teachers, the principals, the school psychologists, but in other colleges, it's the nurses and the counselors. Are you here tonight? Where are you? I know that all the graduates are amazing human beings, but I have to acknowledge our helper graduates. Helper graduates, not only do you have wickedly mad skills that allow you to do some incredibly important and complicated work, but you wrap these skills artfully in compassion and empathy and heart. And a final thank you to all of you graduates as we tell you to go. Thank you for letting us walk beside you for at least a little part of your journey. Thank you for sharing yourselves, your talent, your passion, and your dreams about the journey that you are on. Thank you for creating footprints for those who are walking behind you. I hope your path might wind its way back to us, even if only for a little bit. So in that hope, I won't think as I won't tell you to go. I think I'll simply say, till we meet again. Thank you. Well, a warm welcome to all of you. My name is Paul Steger. I'm the dean of the Liege Dean College of Fine Arts. And I just want to extend my sincere congratulations to all of our December graduates. You and all of those who've supported you have should be exceptionally proud of your accomplishments. You have risen to the challenges put before you, unimaginable challenges at times, and you've created deep and lasting relationships that will be an essential part of you for the rest of your lives. You've used your intuition, your training, and the skills to create works that changed people's lives, changed people's perspectives, and their understanding of themselves and of the world around them. And in the midst of all the hurly-burly of this time and, and over the last few years, I encourage you to take stock. Take stock in what you've been able to accomplish. The tectonic shifts that we've experienced over the past four years have given us all a unique opportunity to dive deep into those things that are our core values. Believe that what you care about will allow you to overcome any obstacle that appears to stand in your way. Let kindness and compassion lead you. These qualities will serve as your strengths in approaching the world around you. Make work that entertains, 
that argues and that engages. And above all else, believe in yourself. I'm echoing everybody else here. Believe that you can make a difference now and for all time. I encourage you to work tirelessly to create a future world that's better than our present one, that includes everyone and advances everyone. I speak for all the faculty and the staff, our patrons, our supporters, your fellow students when I say we are and will continue to be extremely proud of you. You are a part of our Webster family. You've heard that now and forever. If you ever need us, we'll be here for you. I'll close by saying congratulations to all the December graduates from the Leisure Dean College of Fine Arts. All right, I know you guys have looked at the program and see you're getting excited because we're near the bottom, or maybe sad, I don't know. Good evening, my name is Eric Reine. I'm chair of the management department in the Walker School of Business and Technology. It's my great pleasure to stand before you today on behalf of the Dean, Simone Cummings, plus the faculty and staff of the Walker School to congratulate you, our class of 2022. Kudos to all of you for rising to the challenge and doing what you needed to do to successfully complete your academic programs of study in the midst of a pandemic. I know it wasn't easy, but you prevailed, which shows me you have resilience. Resilience is one's ability to adapt despite adversity. It's the mental fortitude that allows individuals to bounce back from difficult life situations. Resiliency makes a difference in life and in work. Research has shown that those who are resilient experience greater job satisfaction, work happiness, organizational commitment, and engagement. From a work perspective, resiliency helps us to stay motivated and keeps us moving forward. I want you all to understand that your ability to work and study through the pandemic is indicative of your ability to be successful at anything you undertake. Each of you has the capacity to do amazing things. Given the changes going on in the workforce right now, I see opportunities for all of you. Most of you are probably aware of the Great Resignation, and as part of this phenomenon, approximately 25% of the U.S. workforce, that's one in four workers, quit their jobs over the past two years. That type of exodus means that there are job openings that would not have existed prior to the pandemic in a vast number of companies all over the world. You are graduating during a period of great opportunity, great resignation, great opportunity. In addition, the COVID pandemic has changed the culture of work in this country. We see this everywhere. Many companies are allowing workers to work permanently from home, Buildings remain empty. Zoom is a new platform to do meetings. You can have a job anywhere in the world and still stay in St. Louis. Isn't that right, Amy? <laughs> and now, as we continue to march towards a new normalcy, companies are staffing up to capture increasing demand. The number of open positions across all online listings is consistently 5 million or above since the start of the pandemic. Today, job seekers are in a fantastic position if they have the skills employers need. But this is not an issue for any of you because you're Webster graduates. We know you have the soft skills employers are seeking and the content knowledge that's in demand. Now, it's up to you to have the confidence to wield it. Nevertheless, should you have difficulty finding that first or next opportunity, just remember, as everyone has said, we're here to help. As was just said, once you're part of the Webster family, you're always part of the Webster family. To the graduates of the Walker School, welcome to the mountaintop. 
This is not the only mountaintop, but welcome to this mountaintop. The Walker School believes in you. We are here to support you, and we know you will make a positive and profound difference in all you do, representing yourself, your family, the Walker School, and Webster University. To the entire Webster University class of 2022, again, congratulations, toast, and happy holidays. Thank you to our academic leadership. Now to welcome all of you, now to welcome all of you to the Webster University Alumni Association, I will introduce Daniel Lasella. Daniel is the president of the Webster University Alumni Board of Directors. He earned his bachelor's degree in accounting in, Webster, in, accounting in 2004. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dang Williams. Uh, good morning, or good afternoon, and congratulations. Uh, it's an honor and pri privilege to share this special moment with you. What a remarkable achievement to earn your Webster University degree. Take a moment to take pride in your dedication, your commitment, and your diligence. I mean it when I say you earned it. On behalf of the Webster University Alumni Association, I welcome you to a very proud, and very loyal alumni family. Today, you join the ranks of more than 200,000 Webster graduates around the world who proudly call Webster their alma mater. The Alumni Association was founded in 1923 and will be celebrating 100 years next year. Isn't that remarkable? <laughs> and do know, that membership is free and automatic and forever. As newly inducted members of the Alumni Association, I encourage each of you to display your diploma with pride. Display it in your home, your office, your classroom, or another highly visible place. Be proud of your degree and don't be bashful about it. You earn this. Also, please share your love of Webster with others. Update your LinkedIn profile, post about it on social media, and don't forget good old word of mouth. You never know what colleague or friend or family member will be inspired to earn their own Webster degree. And as you continue your journey of success, remember that you've, all that you've gained from your time at Webster. Today is not your last day at Webster. It is the beginning of a new relationship, a lifelong relationship. So please, I encourage each of you to stay connected to the Alumni Association, where we offer ways to network with fellow alumni, connect with friends, and enjoy social opportunities. And be sure to stop by the Alumni Association information table this evening at the reception to pick up some fun spirit wear and some Gorlock goodies. Once again, it is truly an honor to welcome you to the Webster University alumni family. We are also very proud of you. Thank you. On behalf of everyone on stage, we are so proud of your accomplishments, and we are thrilled that you are part of the Webster family. We look forward to continuing the celebration next door at the reception. It is in the East Academic Building, so please follow the signs and directions from our staff. Finally, we wish you the best of luck in the next chapter of your professional and personal life. Thank you. Thank you. 